Good morning and welcome to Year Three's English lesson. This is Lesson Two of Otterline and the Yellow Cat. The word of the week is warped. In the previous lesson, we wrote down the definition, but now can you write sentences using the word correctly? Thursday, the thirtieth of April, two thousand and twenty. Our objective today is to make predictions and to summarise. Whilst we are reading Otterline and Yellow Cat, it's a good idea to be a reading detective. Here's some points on how to be a good detective. Collect the information. Read and look carefully for clues. Decide what's important and what might be misleading. Be curious. Ask questions. Find links and make connections. Come up with ideas using the information you have gathered. So, what puzzles did you notice in Chapter One? You may need to go back to lesson one and read chapter one again. Make sure you make a note of all of your findings. We're about to start chapter two, so make sure you have your notebook ready to write down any interesting things that you noticed whilst we read the story. Otterline and the Yellow Cat by Chris Riddell. Chapter two. Mister Munro was sitting in the Bader Mayer armchair reading the newspaper. Mr. Munro often read his newspaper if he'd had trouble trying to sleep or had a bad dream about a bog in Norway. He liked to read the travel section about holidays on tropical islands and sunny beaches. Several pages caught Otterline's eye. Otterline got out a pair of Balinese pinkin shears from the scissor collection and carefully cut out several items to put in her notebook. Mr. Munro didn't notice. He was engrossed in a story about the Gobi Desert, where it hardly ever rains. No new leads in the shoebox building burglary. Police remain baffled by the burglary in the shoebox building on Third Street. Despite extensive inquiries and prolonged investigations, Police Commissioner Ronald Flatfoot admitted, "We remain baffled." The victim of the burglary, Mrs. Rachel Armstrong, was too upset to talk to the inquirer last night, but said in a written statement, "I have nothing further to add." Police appeal to the public to be vigilant and on their guard at all times. Burglary at the Pointy Tower baffles police. Police remain baffled by a burglary at the Pointy Tower on Third Street. Despite extensive inquiries and prolonged investigations, Police Commissioner Ronald Flatfoot admitted we remain baffled. The victim of the burglary, Mrs. Dominica Wilson, was too outraged to talk to the inquiry last night, but said in a written statement, "I'm too outraged to talk." Police appeal to the public to be vigilant and on their guard at all times. Another burglary on Third Street leaves no clues. Police were baffled last night by another burglary on Third Street in an audacious cat burglary on the apartment of the 15th floor of the Ice Cream Cone Building. Jewelry worth quite a lot was stolen. Despite initial inquiries and prolonged investigations, Police Commissioner Ronald Flatwood admitted we are baffled. The victim of the burglary, Mrs. Pinky Nuremberg, was too shocked to talk to the inquiry last night, but said in a written statement, "I'm in shock." Police appeal to the public to be vigilant and on their guard at all times. Lonely pet lovers, look no further. Quality lap dogs supplied for every knee. The lap dog agency, number twenty-six, the boardwalk, Harbourside, big city, nine nine two nine. Otterline thinks she must investigate this. That night, after Smith and Smith technicians had plumped the pillows and drawn the curtains, Otterline got out of bed and went to her special disguises wardrobe. Otterline was a mystery of disguise and had a diploma to prove it from the Who Are You Academy of Subterfuge. When she was ready, she knocked on Mister Monroe's door. "Your hair could do with a brush," said Otterline when he opened the door. "But we haven't got time for that now. Here, put this on." She handed Mister Monroe a large shabby raincoat. Mister Monroe handed her an umbrella just in case. They set off through the city. What effect has the illustrator created in the use of the light and the dark shadows for this scene? They came to an old warehouse. Otterline studied her notebook. There was a sign on the door which read, "The Lap Dog Agency by appointment only." Mister Monroe was going to ring the bell, but Otterline stopped him. Instead, they looked through a rather grubby window, and this is what they saw. So, what do you predict Otterline will do next? Let's finish off chapter two. I'd like you to think about what Yellow Cat has been up to, and what do you think the poker players that are sat around the table have been doing? 
The poker players looked strangely familiar. Behind them, a cockatoo was talking into a telephone. I'm very sorry, madam, but that's company policy, the cockatoo was saying. If you lose a lapdog we supplied you with, we can't trust you with another one now then, can we? Goodbye. The cockatoo put the receiver down. Just then a yellow cat walked in. Good evening, boys, she purred. Had a good week. The poker players wagged their tails. Excellent, purred the yellow cat. Give her Mrs. Nirenbara the slip, I see, McTurr, she said, patting a small Lancashire terrier on the head. That's right, boss, snarled the dog. I ran out of that poodle parlour after one of those perfumed baths and kept on running. Good work, said the yellow cat. Now, boys, time for business. Show me what you got. The poker players put down their cards and picked up their pencils and started scribbling. Bring them to me, Clive, said the yellow cat. The cockatoo flapped about, gathering up the droid in his beak and took them to yellow cat. Excellent, she purred. The penguinese lapdog dropped his doggy chew. I ran off in the park this morning. Mrs Lloyd threw me a stick and she's still waiting for it, but I'm not going back. The yellow cat smiled. If this information is correct, my furry friend, she purred, then you won't have to. The task today is to record details and ideas that you have about the burglaries in Otterline and the Yellow Cat. Try to look at all the links, look at the buildings, look at the news report and look at all of the information and the illustrations. You may want to write your ideas a little bit like this, basing notes on each of the buildings and what has happened. Can you make any links between all the crimes? Well done for today. Sorry if you're having difficulty reading the text. I'm trying my best to read the story as quickly as possible in the time that I have. So don't forget to email me all your work and I will reward you with dojos. And do remember, stay at home and stay safe.